Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be going over how to enable DLSS4 Transformer model globally using the new NVIDIA app update, as well as enabling Smooth Motion, which now supports RTX 40 series graphics cards. The only software you'll need to download is of course the NVIDIA app, so go ahead and use the link down in the description below and we'll get straight into it. Alright, so once you've downloaded the NVIDIA app, go ahead and open it up and come down here to Settings, About, and you're going to want to click this Early Access box. Now, I already have the latest 11.0.5 version of the NVIDIA app, uh, which is the beta right now. For you, it's going to be a little prompt up here that will ask you to relaunch. So go ahead and click that button and it'll open back up and it should be 11.0.5.238. And once you've confirmed this, come up to drivers and download the NVIDIA uh, 581.08 driver, which is the latest driver, which has support for the global DLSS overrides and support for NVIDIA Smooth Motion for RTX 40 series graphics cards. And now, for the good part, go to global settings. Now, here is the new thing with this uh, app beta and driver. You can actually set the DLSS4 override globally um, right here instead of going on a per game basis like this and going one by one. So, come here to model presets. And what this does is it lets you add the latest presets, uh, which are the uh, model, like for the Transformer model and CNN model. Current one is Transformer Model Preset K3.10.3. So all you have to do is click Latest. If you don't know what any of that means and you want to keep it simple, just click Latest and click Apply. But now you've set DLSS4 to be globally applied to the latest preset in all of these games that are applicable and whitelisted by NVIDIA because not all of them will just work. So that's what this does and it saves a lot of time now. The other thing that you can do here is the global DLSS override for frame generation. So if a game, if you have a 50 series graphics card and a game does not have 3x or 4x frame generation, but it does have 2x frame generation, you could click any of these. And the next time you launch the game, uh, provided that you have frame generation enabled in that game, it'll apply to either of these values that you've set here. And DLSS override for super resolution mode. This is if you want to set, uh, like some games don't have DLA like Overwatch 2. So you can actually set this here and it'll force everything to be DLA at 100% resolution, provided that DLSS is enabled in that game. Now, I don't suggest you do these two things here. This is something that you you will want to do on a per game basis because not every game you're going to want, you know, 3x, 4x frame gen and not every game you're going to want DLA, right? So you're going to come here and for example, like I showed or I mentioned Overwatch, you could just do it here. Oh, and this actually great timing. So I set the latest uh, super resolution override here, right? But in Overwatch, it's still saying use the 3D application setting, not the latest. So it actually didn't apply. So the next time I launch this game, it will not be using the latest uh, DLSS Transformer model. I don't know why this is happening. It doesn't happen with every single game, but it does happen with some games. I think this is just a bug because this is still in beta. But if you do see that a game is not actually activating the new DLSS Transformer model, all you have to do is come to that game and click latest here and it should apply. Now, I know this is kind of like, what the fuck? We just got a global preset and we shouldn't have to go one by one to check. But I think for now, as long as this is in beta, right? Like they have to be aware of this issue and maybe the official release later on is going to have this fixed. But it's just, just something to be aware of. And I thought I'd actually... Uh, show this just in case you know you guys do try it and it's not applying so i'm going to be using red dead redemption 2 as an example for image quality comparison and smooth motion and for red dead redemption 2 it did apply uh the super resolution so that's that's pretty nice uh, that's good to know but again if it if it doesn't apply usually it's on use global default if it doesn't apply the latest uh, just apply it yourself and it should work and now I'm going to show you the image quality difference between the old DLSS and the new DLSS Transformer model in Red Dead Redemption 2. So on the left side, we have the older DLSS 2 that comes with the game. And on the right, we have the new DLSS 4 Transformer model override, which we just did in the NVIDIA app. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to line up the weather conditions for this comparison, but you should still be able to make out the immediate differences in image quality between the old and the new DLSS. So if we have a look at the tree in the background here, you could see that the left side exhibits a lot of flickering and image instability, whereas the right side is a lot more stable. Sorry about the heat wave effect, but you could still see that it's like stable overall in terms of uh, texture definition, geometry. There's no noticeable aliasing and flickering like the left side. It's a lot less ghosting as well. 
which is something you're going to notice with the transform model overall. The image is just going to look a lot sharper. It's going to have a lot less artifacting around edges of geometry, a lot less uh, artifacting and motion blur or ghosting around, again, moving objects. And yeah, I think it's a worthwhile free upgrade to image quality that you should definitely try out. The performance hit is not that much as well. You can see on the overlay that it's only between like maybe 5 to 10 FPS at the very worst. So, and this is at 720p, by the way, if you look on the bottom there. Uh, 720p internally upscaled to 1440p at uh, DLSS performance. It is very usable now, and I would highly suggest you try it out if you need a bit more performance, especially since the image quality, again, is very usable. So yeah, now we're going to move on to the NVIDIA Smooth Motion tutorial for the RTX 40 and 50 series GPUs. All right, so go ahead and open up the NVIDIA app again and go to Graphics, Global Settings first. And what you're not going to do is enable Smooth Motion here because this is going to apply to every single game, including the multiplayer stuff, which I don't advise using. So go to Program Settings instead and find the game that you want to apply Smooth Motion to. So in our case, it's going to be Red Dead Redemption 2. Scroll all the way down until you find it and click on so once you turn this on, low latency mode is going to kick into Ultra to immediately mitigate the input lag. Um, it's not as good as NVIDIA Reflex, but it still does the job. And the other thing you're going to want to do is have your max frame rate turned on. So, for example, right, if you're getting just about 60 FPS, I would highly advise you to just lock it to maybe 90 FPS. If you're getting uh, around 65 to 70, maybe you could go to like 100 or 120 it's not going to be the same for everyone. This is not a free FPS button in the sense that it doesn't have a performance cost. But if you're just getting 60 FPS with your graphics card in whatever game you're playing, it might cut down like 5 or 8 FPS uh, as a baseline or a cost for the smooth motion. So you're not exactly going to get a like 60 to 120 doubling of the frame rate. So it's up to you to find out what your base frame rate is and what your max target is going to be. I suggest actually doing a lock like this because if you do have a GPU that's like, for example, for me, I'm getting 90 FPS in Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm going to lock it to 120. The card is capable of getting 140, 130 to 140 randomly, like in several places of the map. But if you have a base number like 120 where you're giving your GPU some headroom, it's going to reduce latency, it's going to improve frame pacing, and generally your experience is going to be much better, especially if you pair it with G-Sync. So that is going to be my recommended way for playing. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like with Red Dead Redemption 2. Here we are back in Red Dead Redemption 2 with the left side having smooth motion disabled and the right side having it enabled. I've slowed down the footage so you can see the frame time graph as well as analyze the smooth motion footage for any potential artifacts. In my opinion, it's very playable, especially with a controller. Honestly, I kind of forgot that it was even enabled after like 10 minutes of playing. So that's a pretty good sign. Now, it's not as good as native frame generation with motion vectors for HUD elements, but it does work quite well, at least in this game, and is an option for those of you with similar PC specs. And definitely try it out with whatever games you might be playing. It's actually not too bad for uh, Helldivers too, as well. So that's going to be it for the smooth motion stuff. Now I'm going to show you one last tutorial for the NVIDIA overlay so that you guys can actually see if the DLSS overrides and smooth motion are enabled in-game. All right, so once you're back in the NVIDIA app, click Settings, go to Features, and make sure this NVIDIA overlay is enabled. And once that's done, click Alt-Z on the keyboard to open this menu and come down here to where it says Statistics and click that and make sure it's enabled. The shortcut is Alt-R. Now for you guys, it's going to be set to Basic, which is just frame rate, GPU usage, CPU usage, and latency. You're going to come here to Custom and click View All. And here you could check all of the stuff that you might find useful for overlay monitoring um, and go ahead and choose whatever you like. But the ones that are going to be important for this tutorial is super resolution model override, super resolution mode override and smooth motion. So go ahead and check these three. It'll be right here. This will just show you that the preset is set to the latest um, DLSS4 transformer model, which is preset K. So you know that it's actually working when you do the override in game. And this will just show you that smooth motion is active or inactive. And that's just going to be handy to see that uh, you go over here and you do all this stuff and if it's working or not. Now, the reason why I didn't show you this overlay in any of the game footage is because I use this uh, shadow play to record everything. And for some reason, NVIDIA thought it would be nice to just make the overlay invisible while recording games, which is pretty dumb in my opinion. Hopefully they make a toggle for it in the future because it'll be less of a pain in the ass for me. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys uh, learned something new and it helped you guys out. I am working on a DLSS frame generation setup guide, which is going to go in depth with performance comparisons, latency tests, and how to set up everything the right way for the obviously the best experience. So stick around for that by hitting that subscribe button. And while you're down there, why don't you hit that like button as well, dude? Yeah. All right. See you in the next one.